Reading. There once was a lawyer called Sarah Fox who worked in the building trade. Her approach was quite unorthodox to calling a spade a spade. The other lawyers wrote heretofore and quid pro quo in Latin. But Sarah's contracts are down to earth. They do what it says on the tin. Can somebody pick that up? I haven't got enough hands. <laughs> Some firms go DIY for their terms because they won't pay lawyers' rates. Their contracts are all cut and paste. They just change the names and the dates. They Google search the standard words applicable to all causes. It's never clear quite what they mean because they're full of subordinate clauses. But Sarah believes a good contract is the start of a fruitful union. The difference between a partnership that's great and one that's a punian. The words you use to set out your stall define how you like to be seen. Do you come across as a dinosaur or as modern and streamlined and green? But first decide what you want from the deal and analyse all of the stages. Describe each part in detail, it should not take up too many pages. Then do the same for your promises so your counterparts know what they're getting. Then write down the lot in plain English in case one of you's prone to forgetting. Next, figure out what could go wrong and what you would do in that case. Does the work always need to be done by you? Can someone else take your place? Does the deal last forever or just for a time? Can you pull out whenever you like? Can you vary the spec and the rate for the goods if the market price takes a hike? And that's why a contract deserves some thought and why Sarah is in demand. She can make you the boss of your own hard work, not a skivvy that others command. But if you prefer to play Google Roulette and ignore Sarah's expert assessment, just beware you don't end up with Bitcoin stocks or a dodgy timeshare investment. <laughs>